Mr. Dilip Chanoy, Mr. Chaudhary, my colleague, Mr. Anil Agarwal, uh, from Ministry of DIPP, Mr. Tyagrajan, Mr. Vaibhav Gupta, distinguished guests, all the participants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really delighted to be here uh, to release this uh, report. And I really like this because it says Make in India for Unmanned Aircraft Systems awaiting its uh, Kitty Hawk moment. So it's very nicely titled. And, uh, and I, I'm glad that early morning there's so many of you here. That shows a huge vibrancy and a tremendous amount of interest in this area. And uh, my view is that this is an area, as Rahul said, which is waiting to be opened up and waiting for us to make a major headway in India. And a rapid advancement in uh, technologies actually have resulted in a very paradigm shift in aviation. And this has been brought in by the advent of the UAS not only in airspace, but also in the business arena. The innovative UAS enabled solutions in areas as you know, tremendously diverse as military, civil, commercial, and these are rapidly expanding and growing. So today, anyone can fly a drone with a little investment and a little understanding of technology. And uh, UAS actually fall into, to my mind, into four functional categories. Although multi-role airframe platforms are becoming more prevalent, firstly, we have the military applications, such as their employment as target and decoys and missions, such as reconnaissance and surveillance, combat roles, such as loitering missiles, communications and logistics. We have civil applications, those involving non-defense government agencies, pertaining to nearly every aspect of smart governance, law enforcement, anti-terrorism, geomapping, fisheries, forest, disaster management, mineral exploration, a wide range of areas actually, these are required. Mapping, photography, meteorological observation, 3D modeling, uh, you know, railway, uh, you know, periodic reviews to ensure that there are no railway accidents which we are prone to on a regular basis. And uh, potentially UAS aided crop surveys, pesticide, fertilizer spraying, health of water reservoirs, irrigation, all these can be used to transform the lives of livelihoods of millions of our farmers. And it, they not merely transform lives, but they can give a huge thrust to better management. They can give a massive thrust to production and productivity. And thirdly, I think, uh, there are the commercial UAVs, which include grid and gas pipeline surveys, mining, logistics, agriculture, mapping soil conditions, crop growth, oil and gas exploration, media coverage. And they offer several opportunities for innovation in the way of doing business. And fourthly, I think UAVs specifically designed for research and development, such as meteorology, avalanche studies, socioeconomic data collection, etc. In all these areas, there are vast opportunities in a country like India. And therefore, to my mind, there's, uh, there's no surprise that no other industry has transformed from military hardware to mass application as quickly as drones. In India, like most other countries, the UAV started off from being used for defense purposes initially, but today are being increasingly used in the civilian, commercial, and recreational space. Many of the weddings we see them. And developments in the field of automation, robotics, miniaturization, material science, thermal imaging have all enabled very diverse civilian and commercial application of drones in sectors like agriculture, power, infrastructure, mining, telecom, uh, with very significant improvements in efficiency and cost. And consequently, the global UAS industry has steadily attracted the attention of operators, manufacturers, and investors alike. And uh, as Rahul briefly mentioned, and to my mind, this is a very timely interaction because 
the drone industry to my mind is likely to go the way of the automobile industry with spillover applications in the industrial sector and in the consumer market too. And this will happen for a variety of reasons. On the one hand, it's transformational impact on ease of doing business. The way of doing business and the cost of doing business is driving the growth of the industry. And on the other, the regulations and concerns, uh, the vast concerns of the widespread and indiscriminate use of the technology raises valid uh, security and safety concerns. And actually, government recognizes this duality, duality and has to carefully prepare the ground for the early induction of this technology into India. And uh, we've been working on this. Uh, we're trying to push the Home Ministry and the Ministry of Civil Aviation and integrating the UAVs into civilian airspace is a, is a fairly challenging job. And this requires an appropriate regulatory framework for operations. Several countries such as Australia, Canada, Japan, Malaysia, Singapore, UK, US have promulgated guidelines for the operation of mini UAs, generally limited by weight, 20 kilo, kilos by altitude 300 feet and operating range limited to a line of sight. And it is hugely important for India to facilitate and promote the energetic development of the UAS industry in India and strive to secure a global leadership in the sunrise industry and aspire to become a global manufacturing hub in times to come. This is, to my mind, very, very important. And hence, this opportunity comes with its share of challenges, which can be broadly be categorized as individual rights concerns and collective security and safety concerns. And therefore, we need a regulation. While in the military sector, the regulation and compliances are resolved, the civilian and commercial sectors are besotted with obstacles for its growth. Foremost among them is the lack of a regulatory regime for the U.S. operations. Despite the obvious promise of UAV technology and its direct impact on better governance, socioeconomic development, Philip to domestic manufacturing, the regulatory framework is awaiting promulgation. I hope the final format of the regulatory regime would unequivocally support the growth of the U.S. industry for a variety of social and economic benefits for, the, for India. For India and its industry leaders, it is imperative that they use this period to develop their business plans and identify the niche areas where their interest lies. Currently, the main user of UAS is the armed forces. The first application of UAE UAV was as targets and decoys in the early 1990s and operated its first drone in 1996. In the first past few years, the demand for various types of UAS has grown exponentially. In the civilian space, some police forces at the state level have been operating micro UAS. In the commercial space, there is a sizable demand from Power Grid, Gale, ONGC for grid and pipeline service. Bollywood, agriculture, mining, construction site, telecom towers, geophysical service, amongst others, have had a huge demand. UAS can transform the efficiency of the service exponentially. There's also increasing demand for drones for recreational purpose, and therefore there's tremendous opportunity for the business community and the UAS to expand its user's base, which can be an efficient tool in the hands of government. So widespread adoption of the U.S. through a facilitative framework would be a transformational step from ease of doing business to a better way of doing business for the government as citizens. And to my mind, adequate demand exists to build a U.A.'s manufacturing and services ecosystem in India. So far as the UAV industry in India is concerned, a few pointers are important. First, the import of drones, import of drones is prohibited. Its manufacture requires an industrial license, and its operations have not been regularized. And despite all this, it is commendable that national industrial capability for UAEs has been developed to a reasonable level of sophistication. In India, there is some design and engineering capability in the private sector, 
while the DRDO and the National Aeronautic Laboratory have designed targets and drones, but the high-end systems are on the drawing board and are at the testing and trial stages. COTS software for automatic takeoff and landing and automatic flight control system is available. There's also some capability in system integration, including ground control stations, but limited to mini UAs in the private sector. Aerostructure manufacturing expertise is limited to secondary structures and gaps exist in manufacture of undercarriage, primary structure, and uh, there, is a, there is no national capability, to my mind, for manufacture of propulsion package engines, systems, and high-end payloads, and this is an area where investment to develop a na national capability is hugely warranted. Apart from the basic system, there would also be demand for a variety of subsystems such as aero, aero engines, diverse types of payloads, avionics, and communication equipment, various types of computer hardware such as processors, displays, man-made interface, and at lower tires of the manufacturing process, transistors, amplifiers, PCBs, all this will come in demand. The potential is enormous for the growth of the indigenous electronic sector and software industry also. While debating this in my office, I also see a second line of business in the UAS segment, and that is of being a service provider offering the UAS for the entire spectrum of remote sensing, surveillance, monitoring, uh, railroad constructions. And this would require investors to own several hundreds of UA systems and then lease it out to operators for undertaking various subtasks. Quite like the Uber and Ola model in vehicles, this is what is required for drones. And this is a transformational market for startups and entrepreneurs who are presently constrained by the lack of clarity on the use of UAS for commercial applications. In the UAS service sector, the main chunk of the business would be for service and monitoring, design, engineering, training, etc. There would be additional business opportunity that would be generated in the US industry as a whole for air traffic management system for drone traffic. As the industry grows, it is vitally important to simultaneously bring in a comprehensive ecosystem for the safe operation of drones and provide unmanned traffic management solutions. This is a sector with substantial challenges and opportunities where Indian software engineers can contribute. And secondly, I think there's very vast potential for anti-drone systems. A new technology industry is on the rise in response to fears over malicious use of drones by terrorists. In enemy forces or even deliberate incursions into privacy. And anti-drone technology is rapidly evolving and offers an opportunity for Indian engineers. And I would merely like to say that it, drones, it has been said that drones are going to replace 80% of operations presently carried out by manned aircrafts. 80% of the operations presently carried out by main, manned air aircrafts. The business opportunity is tremendous and if unleashed has the potential to transform many of the sectors and modernize India rapidly. The Indian market for UAS is of the order of about US dollar 50 billion over the next 15 years. 50 billion over the next 15 years. India must realize the full potential of this technology and leverage it to best advantage as a powerful tool not only for security and safety not only for good governance, not only for increased productivity, but also to encourage consumer and commercial applications to develop a very, very sophisticated U.S. industry sector and make a new India, and make a new India by 2022. In this regard, I would like to make a few recommendations to energize the domestic U.S. industry. Firstly, the, UA, the armed forces being the largest consumer for U.S., offers the best prospect for kick-starting the UAS industry in India. The armed forces do piecemeal imports to meet the individual service demands, which to my mind must be discontinued for indigenous UAS industry to grow and demand aggregation to create the critical mass for commercial investments to take place. This aggregation 
would include the requirements of the security forces under MHA, railways, etc. So we aggregate the demand and push for make in India. And secondly, I think India should aspire to be a global hub for design, development, and manufacture of aero engines and aero structures for all types of UAs. The payloads and avionic space are already crowded with many suppliers. The demand aggregation for engines would potentially offer a sizable market for overseas investors, providing the scale and size of the opportunity are adequately quantified. The regulatory framework, the thirdly, the regulatory framework for opening up U.S. operations for civil and commercial services need to be promulgated early in line with the global best practices. This should include Anything which is not globally best practices will not work, and we should go for the best practice globally. And this should include requirements of a UAS traffic management system and anti-drone systems. One of the primary beneficiaries of UAS would be the agriculture, fisheries, forest, and irrigation sector. UAS services by startups must be encouraged through incentives, benefit, tax breaks for such services for the benefit of agriculture sector so that we are you able to use the latest technology to double our farmers' income and give a huge boost to production and productivity in agriculture. And that is an area where this new technology is greatly required. Finally, drones provide better information awareness, whether for governance, commerce, or security. In times to come, I'm certain that this technology will open completely new vistas of business and further accentuate the growth of the industry. I'm delighted to be here, and I'm delighted that Vicky is addressing this very critical area and has come out with a very fascinating report on Make in India for Unmanned Aircraft Systems. I wish the conference all success and very fruitful deliberations, and I wish all of you who are involved in this sector all uh, prosperity, and, uh, and may you continue to disrupt the sector in ways which India has never seen before. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.